Hello everyone, welcome back to Poetry Surprises and welcome back to England and quarantine or self-isolation. 14 days of bliss watching the rain fall by the window. After spending two months in a rather sunny France, I come back and Storm Alex uh, decides to descend upon me. But I've got 14 days to work at poetry, so I can't complain. Anyway, I got back last night, very tired, quite stressed, quite strange really, because I travel around a lot and I'm quite used to sort of nipping between airports and trains and planes, but the sheer emptiness of most of the buildings and modes of transport that I was on actually left me feeling much more anxious than if I'd been surrounded by people, which I suppose I'm quite used to. Anyway, I got back and went to bed quite early after getting a Deliveroo, a curry Deliveroo. Don't get those in France. And I immediately started dreaming and I woke up at half past five and a poem was going through my head. So I thought, right, I'll write it down. And you know, this poem might have something to do with the incredibly tight inspection process I had to go through to get back to where I live. Uh, filling in forms saying who I am, what I am, what age I am, where I'm going, how I'm staying, uh, numerous telephone numbers, um, uh, something we're, we're just not used to uh, until now. So I wrote this poem and it's called The Fly and the Spider and it kind of came to me quickly really. So it's only a day old but I thought I'm going to read it to you. The Fly and the Spider. Do not move, said the spider, and the fly complied. Wrapped up in its silken gown, he froze and meekly sighed. Do not sigh, said the spider, and fly looked back and smiled in hope of spider sympathy, but spider laughed then cried, do not blink your hundred eyes, the eight of mine will see if any fang or hair or flank or one of your six stumpy shanks as much as twists or writhes in hope of getting free. But why do you distrust me so? asked the helpless fly. Is it something I have said that keeps me dangling in your web? Is it something that I know? Or do my pearly wings that glow sentence me to die? Now I shall spin strong threads of silk and tighten them for spite. No jailer's ever been so kind to gift you long johns to royally bind. Your monstrous lack of gratitude is what denies you flight. So Fly sang praise to Spider in thanks for such fine clothes. But as his song grew louder, Spider sniffed his nose. Do not sing, said Spider. There's naught to sing about. But try as fly might, fly notes kept popping out. That's it, said the spider. I'll suck you till you die. And shrunken to a withered husk, peace will comfort me at dusk. I cannot stop, sang singing fly and Spider coiled in rage. He stamped on the threads of his silken web 
with first his fourth, then seventh leg, and the eighth came clattering down in hammer strikes of arachnid sound. But no amount of drumming could drown the fly's song out. So Spider plucked his silken strings, arpeggioed up to the flightless wings, smartly dressed in homespun rings. But when his eight eyes looked around, the long johns he had tightly wound, clothed nothing but angelic sound. Fly was nowhere to be found. But I think, as I suggested earlier, there's an element of feeling a little bit trapped by coming back to London in that poem. But isn't it strange how you dream your circumstances, how they reflect themselves in tightly woven images? And I think this is going to go on. So I might be back tomorrow or the day after with another song of the fly or some other critter. See you then. Bye.